Chase Tunnel here. Look at the sunglasses I got. They've got like little tube worms or something like that crawling on them. Now, they're hard to look out of, but what, I, what I'm noticing here is these worms casings are falling off. Wow. Now, I don't know a lot about the, I'm guessing that these are serpulid worms. They, uh, they make like this um, uh, really hard kind of shell around them as they grow and they can actually make reefs out of them. But it just so happens that I know somebody at the Heart Research Institute that is, they actually have a study going on right now looking at this stuff. So I, since I'm not 100% sure that what these are, I'm gonna take them to her and let her kind of tell us uh, what if that's exactly what they are and maybe um, tell us a little bit about her project looking at uh, worms that make reefs out of this stuff because if you're a fisherman uh, you probably you like that type of thing uh, whenever you're fishing out on a reef but so let's take these in and see what we can find out stay tuned okay so we made it off the beach let's go check out and see if these things are actually serpulid worms uh, and what the deal is with these. Uh, I I'm very interested to know. Yeah, so these are definitely, um, the tubes on these glasses are definitely serpulid worm tubes. So they're a, a calcareous tube that's made by a tiny little marine worm, kind of like an earthworm. Um, they secrete these around them and they live inside of them as a protective tube. So. Um, even though they're teeny tiny little tubes, they can build up to create large um, amounts of habitat. So the worm that actually does this, I'll show you, we have a, we, we happen to do a lot of work with serpulid. So we have a lot of things that we can show you related to these, but this is actually what the, the worm looks like. Uh, if you were to blow it up, this is a, obviously a much larger 3D model, but you can see this is a worm kind of like an earthworm. It's got some feeding appendages on top. And like I said, it creates this, this calcium carbonate tube. A lot of people might be familiar with even being at the beach or pulling oyster shells out of the bay. If you've ever found a shell like this, you can see you might be familiar with those same white um, hard tubes on the shells. And these are the same thing that are on those glasses. So again, tubes made by serpulid worms that they live inside of. And then of course, when they die, leave some habitat back for other things to live on. So um, this is a really, really interesting find. Um, in Texas, serpulid uh, worms create these very unique reef structures that are only found in a handful of places around the world. So it's really exciting for us to start to learn a little bit more about those systems. A chunk of that reef if you were to, to break it off or find some of it broken off in Baffin Bay, it looks like this. And you can see these thick um, aggregations of those tubes that have built up over many, many years. You can also see some um, barnacles and some other mussels and things that have made their homes in this reef. The reefs in Baffin Bay, these serpulid reefs are just like coral reefs. They've been dated to be 3,000 years old. So they're, they're this icon iconic, unique, special habitat that we have in the very south part of Texas in our bays that we really understand very little about and we're, we're working to both study and also learn how to restore. So one, some of the work that we've been doing down in that system is to look at um, restoration of these reefs. So we know that they're targeted a lot for, for recreational angling. Um, the large fish like to aggregate around these reefs because they're just chock full of prey. So teeny tiny crustaceans and shrimp and worms and crabs and things are all around that reef as well as a lot of medium-sized fish so we see those bigger fish come in there and that's where fishermen like to, to, to pull up their boats and fish because of that you can imagine these things can be you know three feet or higher off of the bay bottom it's really easy for boats to run into them and these are really really fragile so if it gets hit with a boat or a boat motor or somebody steps on it that crumbles and it's going to fall to the bay bottom and 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 essentially be lost that habitat will be that part of the habitat will be destroyed. So we are, um, we do a lot of work with oyster reef restoration. We have a lot of interest in restoring all sorts of coastal habitats, but 
we have a lot of interest in this one because of its, it being so special and unique. So one thing that we've been doing is taking what we've learned from oyster reef restoration and trying to apply it to serpulid worm reef restoration. The first thing that we did that was very cool that we had some interesting findings is we put some ceramic tiles out throughout Baffin Bay to try to just see, will the worms attach to these tiles? Where are the worms most gonna attach if we wanna rebuild reef? Where are the best places? And we took those tiles and we put them on the bay bottom. And then for some of the tiles, we put a protective cage on top of it. And the reason we put that protective cage over it was to keep fish from eating any worms that might attach to our ceramic tiles. And then we came out about three months later and we came to retrieve the tiles and we removed this protective cage from the tile. And you can see on the inside, after just three months, the worms actually much preferred settling and creating tubes on the inside of that protective cage than they did on the tiles themselves. So something about this area where they're protected from predation, this area that's kind of in the dark and a little bit more calm waters than you would have on the outside of the reef seems to be the place where we can really start to recover some of these populations. So we're learning a little bit day by day about this important habitat and hopefully being able to uh, do some large scale restoration in the future. Okay, so uh, thanks to Dr. Jenny Pollock, uh, you know, for telling us all about these things. Um, 3,000 years old is uh, some of the stuff that they're looking at with these serpulid worms. That's pretty amazing. And, and, it's, and it's right here in the coastal bend. Um, okay, well, that's just some of the interesting things you can tie back to things that are washing up on the beach. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this episode of Beachcombing. Uh, I'm heading home. It's the weekend. Bye.